Hello students, welcome to the Object Oriented Analysis and Design Component Diagrams lesson. Component diagrams are used in modeling the physical aspects of object oriented systems. In a component diagram, we have components. That means when we combine all those components together, we would create the whole system. In other words, when we design the component diagram, we can divide our system into number of components and represent those components and their interactions within the component diagrams. Therefore, your component diagram will represent the components of your system as well as the interaction between those software components for visualizing, specifying as well as documenting the components of your system. When we talk about component diagram, it does not describe the functionality of the system. What it describes is, is describe the components which used to make those functionalities. This is a kind of static implementation view. This will visualize the system components such as libraries, packages and files. And it will also visualize the interaction between those components. Component diagram is a special type of UML diagram. When we are drawing that component diagrams, first we will have to identify all the physical artifacts of the system because the component diagram describes the physical artifacts of the system. Therefore, how we do this is, first we will have to identify the libraries and other artifacts relevant to the application. And then we will have to identify what are the relationships among those artifacts. And then we have to model those with the component structure. This is how we represent a component. Here you clearly see on the upper right hand corner we have this kind of a symbol that represents a component. When we talk about components, components are represented as a rectangular classifier with the keyword component and uh, this component may be displayed as a rectangle with a component icon in the upper right hand corner or else component notation element can be up there and then there will be the name of the component. For an example, this is the rectangle with the component icon on the upper right hand corner and this one is the component notation. So here the name of this component is component B and here the name of this component is component A. So the first one could be referred as component by uh, looking at this symbol up there and the second one could be identified as a component because this notation component is mentioned here. As we have already discussed, Components in a component diagram are combined together using links. Here, what we use to link two components is interfaces. When we talk about interfaces, we have two types of interfaces. One is provided interface and the other is required interface. Here we have two components named component 1 and component 2. Component 1 has required interface and component 2 has provided interface. How we distinguish th these two is uh, this required interface will have half circle and provided interface will have full circle. So this component 2 has provided interface because here you see there we have a complete circle and when you look at this component 1, here we see half circle which represent the required interface. A required interface always requires an interface to complete its operation and provided interface will always provide interface to another component. So when we link these two together, these two can work together to accomplish a given task. In a component, 
there is something called port. Ports are represented using a square along the edge of the component and these ports are used to help expose the interfaces of a component. Here we see two interfaces. One is provided interface and the other is required interface and this box is the one which we refer as a port. As you are aware, provided interfaces provide the services that another component requires and required interfaces require service from another component. Here in this example, we have two components. First component is named as component and the second component is named as another component. The component component has a required interface and the component another component has a provided interface. So according to the definition or according to what happens in these interfaces, this component component will require interface and that required interface will be provided by another component named as another component. So here this another component is the one which will provide the interface to the component. And now let's see another example. Here we have three components. Order system component, inventory system component and customer repository component. When we consider order system component, here we have two required interfaces and when we talk about inventory system, here we see one provided interface and when we see customer repository, here also we have one provided interface. According to this diagram, order system requires two interfaces named product accessor interface as well as customer lookup interface. Therefore, customer repository component will provide the customer lookup interface to the order system and inventory system component will provide the product accessor interface to the order system. Therefore, these components work together to accomplish the tasks related to order system. What we mean by dependency in component diagram? In a component diagram, we can show the dependencies between components. Dependency means we are going to check whether one component depends on the other. Here we have this dotted line arrow which is named as dependency arrow. If you see the direction of this arrow, it directed from order system to the customer repository component. And if you look at this dependency arrow, this one is also directed from order system component to the inventory system component. This means order system depends on customer repository as well as inventory system components. Here we have another example. This is called as a subsystem. How we identify this as a subsystem is, here if you see this place, here we have the notation element named as subsystem. When you check the same for a component, that notation element represent as a component. Here we have subsystem as the notation element and in a component, we have component as the notation element. Therefore, when we have subsystem as the notation element, this represents a subsystem. And when we have the term component in the notation element, it represents a component. In this subsystem, we see three components connected together using the interfaces. And when we look at the subsystem, here we have one required interface named as payment 
and two provided interfaces named as customer as well as store admin. Here we have three ports belongs to this subsystem and those ports will connect whatever the interface has connected to this subsystem. Let's see these internal components and what happens in between them. This auto system component has three interfaces. One interface named as payment interface, which is a required interface. And another interface named as uh, adjust top interface, which is also a required interface. And another interface, which is named as order. And it is a provided interface. Therefore, this order system requires two interfaces payment interface and adjust stock interfaces and those interfaces will be provided one from outside that is the payment data and another one through the catalog component and then this order system component will provide an interface to the storefront which is named as order the storefront component requires Two interfaces, one is order interface which will be provided from order system and the other required interface is SQL command which will be provided by catalog component and this storefront component will provide two other interfaces which are named as store admin and customer interfaces. So customer interface will pass outside the subsystem and also this order admin interface will also be passed to the outside of this subsystem. When we look at this catalog component, it has only two interfaces which both are provided interfaces. One will provide SQL command interface and the other will provide Agile stock interface therefore if we talk about this overall subsystem this overall subsystem requires payment data to be inserted to this subsystem and this subsystem will provide two other interfaces which are named as customer and store admin and when we want to create the complete system this subsystem could be connected with the other systems to meet the complete system and remember when you have the complete system here you do not use this component symbol in this upper right hand corner so this is all about components and components diagrams and now you should be able to divide your system into number of components and integrate those components together to create component diagrams